with so many podcasts out there, shows can get lost in the shuffle. That's why we implore you to check out Too Many Captains. You can find us at a moviepodcast.com. Five unique takes on Hollywood movies and culture. Find us on Twitter at It's a Film Podcast. Check our intellectual deep dives into theatrical films. Find us on Instagram at Too Many Captains Productions. Unique takes on soundtracks. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Too Many Captains Productions. Find us at a moviepodcast.com on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. And now, here comes a new episode of Collateral Cinema. I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Robert Ortegon. I'm Ashley Chancellor. I'm Michael Cornwell. And this is Collateral Cinema. <laughs> Welcome to Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters, where we focus on good movies, bad movies, and everything else in between in the world of cinema. We're podcasting straight from somewhere in South Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast. So whatever you have, be it dabs, blunts, bongs, or joints, smoke it if you've got it. And this is a special episode right here. We actually have somebody in studio that we've been meaning to get for a long time. Mr. Michael Cornwell, how are you doing, man? I'm great. great. All right. As I, as I move, my uh, headphones fall completely off my head, but I'm doing good. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. And uh, you were formerly on a podcast called The Country Club, right? Yeah. Yeah, just a little fun comedy project. Had a couple of the boys and uh, yeah, just kind of phased out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes, sometimes it happens that way, you know. But anyway, what also makes this episode special is that we are going back to Tromaville. We are checking out The Toxic Avenger, the definitive trauma movie, directed by Michael Hertz, produced by Michael Hertz and Lloyd Kaufman, of course, written by Lloyd Kaufman. And this is pretty much the iconic mascot for trauma. Right, guys? Right. I mean, he's basically the the Mario of the trauma verse. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, Mario is pretty accurate, right? Mario. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't Just know if you've seen, seen Mario. Yeah, I don't know if you guys seen the original Nukem High. Oh, yeah, the original Nukem High is great. I have that movie, and it is fantastic. I honestly. haven't seen it yet. You need to watch that. I, I did mm-hmm. watch Hectic Night with y'all. That was my first episode on Collateral Cinema. Yeah, and, and that was really interesting because that was actually from the filmmakers themselves. So... It actually was our first foray into indie reviews and whatnot. And then we, we've also featured on the director's cut, we featured Bloodsucking Freaks, which is technically a trauma movie, actually. It's a pretty fucking amazing movie, actually. Bloodsucking Freaks? Bloodsucking Freaks. Yeah, remember that, Robert? Dude. I can't <laughs> believe you have a copy of that. Yet. I know. It, it's a fucked up movie, man. But... Toxic Avenger, to me, it's almost like there's kind of an innocence to it. Right, guys? Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think so. What do you, what do you think? I mean, I mean, Toxie's made out to be an endearing character. And e- e- even given, you know, just the, the straight up murder and, and brutality, you know, like Mortal Kombat-esque graphic violence <laughs> uh, displayed against the, the supervillains of Tromaville. Man, what if Toxie was a downloadable skin for Mortal Kombat 11? That would work, absolutely. It would yeah. work. I mean, Hell yeah. seriously. And, and what, what would his fatality be? Dude, he's got to do something with that air fryer. Oh, yeah, <laughs> That'd be a good one. He pulls out an air fryer and how he kills the guy. Yeah, it yeah. Just, just, burn, just yeah, burns fr- his hands. <laughs> Straight up fries That's his cool. hands. I love that part. <laughs> fatality. <laughs> fatality. But I guess that we could really start with 
you know, yeah, we're watching the DVD right now and we're watching the intro. Pretty much every trauma movie has an intro from Lloyd Kaufman and usually it has Toxie and it has Kabuki Man and whatnot. And we got Kabuki Man surrounded by a bunch of women. That is dancing. another one that I watch with you guys, Sergeant Kabuki Man. Yeah. Which originally was going to be this episode. And then you got a hold of Toxic Avenger and you were like, no, we're going to do Toxic Avenger, right? We have to. I mean, this is, like I said, the definitive trauma movie, right? Absolutely. This guy was the mascot after this. And I don't think any other movies, you know, had a cartoon, video game, action figures after him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, the character is in all the other films, right? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Posters and to see. Uh, yeah, he, he even uh, shows up very briefly in Terra Firmer, I believe. Mm. Very briefly. And also in Tromeo and Juliet, I think. But in th this movie, I mean, it's usually kind of seen as kind of the starting point for trauma. Let's talk about trauma a little bit. This is like one of the premier indie filmmaking studios in New York. It's been around for ages, like over 30 years, close to 40 years plus. And it was started by Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Hertz. And Lloyd Kaufman, what can be said about him, guys? I mean, what a legend. It has its definitive style to it. Like, you can turn it on at any point in any of the movies and you're going to know what you're watching right away. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's the case with quite a few trauma movies, which... I have quite a few of, like, the really, really classic ones. Like I said, Tromeo and Juliet, Terra Firmer, Cannibal the Musical, of course. That's Trey Parker and Matt Stone's contribution. And I also have Redneck Zombies, which is all kinds of fun, honestly. That, yeah, we're talking, I, I haven't seen that one. Oh, you, you got to see it, bro. Oh, yeah. Redneck Zombies is just fucking insane, man. But, I mean, Troma is a inspiration to so many different filmmakers right i mean they have an approach that's just you know fuck it just make a movie fuck the rules we're going to do it our way we're going to fill it up with all kinds of blood we're going to make it a superhero movie instead of just a straight horror movie and the superhero is going to be this nerd turned into a huge hulking monster yeah, and I what I like about this film, I remember I was talking to, about this with you guys earlier, but the movie almost presents itself like a comic book. And this really predates a lot of the, you know, the more the, the modern comic book store uh comic book superhero movies. So, I just like the way that, you know, we transition from each scene feeling like we're going from issue to issue of a comic. Or even panel to panel, right? And page to page a little mm. bit. And yeah, it, it really seems fitting that Toxie would kind of have that comic book feel. I think that there were some comic books made of Toxie, but I mean... Undoubtedly. I, yeah, but I don't really think I've ever seen any of them. And to any of our listeners, if you have any examples of that, you know, oh. share it on our Twitter. But, oh, and the script is... Is there a Citizen Toxie comic? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, maybe. I don't know. But the uh, the script is written like a comic book. Yeah. Like, I, do, does anyone have a line longer than, like, five words? There's no monologues in this film. Absolutely not. And <laughs> and even the any type of expositional dialogue, it's kind of really, really quick to mm. the point, and it just moves on to the next point, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, th the movie you know, presents itself the way, the way the characters dialogue is like speech bubble to speech bubble. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And there's even narration here at the beginning and the end. Again, like a comic book. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And Toxie to me, I mean, he represents the every man. He's kind of an every man kind of hero, you know? I mean, he starts off as just a very weak nerd. I, I who, who was it that said it was like a combination of Steve Urkel and uh, Homeboy from uh, Back to the Future? It was Cinemassacre, I believe. It was yeah, it was James Rolfe. Oh, Marty McFly. Or Marty McFly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. George Avenger, McFly. Toxic no. Avenger Volume One. George McFly. Like a combination of George Mc, George oh, McFly George. and Steve Urkel. Uh, yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, Ro Robert's uh, showing me some of the uh, Toxic Avenger masks that you can get. 
No, there's a volume one comic right there for like two hundred. Oh, there's the comic. Oh, oh yes. fuck Sweet. yeah! How much Get it. it? How much is it? Two hundred twenty-five dollars. What Holy the shit. fuck? God but, damn it! Comic <laughs> books. Put it on this, Collateral's this credit card. Oh yeah, like we have a credit card, like the uh, the bat credit card. The bat. The bat, I bat op- credit card. I opened one up when you were setting up the podcast. Oh, I got in your God. wallet. Got you. God <laughs> damn it! I don't even have a good enough credit to, for that. You, you have a shit. credit. You actually have enough credit. To buy that comic book, and that's it. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna be paying that off for decades. Hey, that mask don't look too bad either. Yeah, that's a Toxic dude, Avenger mask. Sixty that's bucks? That's fucking a deal. crazy. Dude, that's a deal. Nice nightmare toys. Dude. Oh yeah, that's pretty cheap for that quality of mask. Is it? Uh, I'm surprised it wasn't Trick or Treat Studios. They make good masks. They right? do. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the characters in this movie. And, oh, my goodness, there are some characters. Like, of course, starting off with Melvin, as we were talking about earlier, he's just a straight-up nerd. I mean, they even found, like, the most sniveling actor to play him, right? And just for the audience, Melvin is toxic. Uh, yeah, Melvin, Melvin is toxic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. I don't know if we established that. Yeah. Melvin is the nerdy janitor at the uh, Tromaville Health Center, and he is pranked by a bunch of serial-killing punks, th- these guys and their girlfriends, which is kind of unique here, right? They yeah. just drive over people. like Yeah. They, <laughs> they, it, it, it says... Oh, sorry, guys. It such says, an, oh, go ahead. It says it's a sh- uh, Toxic Avenger was a short-lived comic book series based on a trauma film entertainment and was published by marvel comics no oh, way. oh shit marvel comics did that yeah nice. so toxie Ooh. is in the marvel cinema or marvel universe yes huh? yes somebody Time to move to mcu hey you know lloyd kaufman was in uh <laughs> guardians of the galaxy yeah you know and james gunn does have that connection to trauma i could see oh it. there it, we go it could be done okay i'm totally gonna start advocating that okay hashtag toxie for mcu like I'm straight in. up i am in I want Toxie. Just, just it'd be just as badass as if you know Ash was all of a sudden from Evil Dead was all of a sudden thrown in there. He would, he would be good in like one of the Deadpool films. He would be perfect for Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd, that'd be a good setting to throw him into. Even for just like a little cameo or something. Uh-huh. And, and like, with the MCU, you know, going into like the multiverse shit soon, it seems like based on their lineup. Yeah, what what if they made Tromaville like a alternate uh, y- y- dimension like, and that's where Toxie yeah. comes from? Hell yeah. But they she, could do wacky shit like that now. But see, the, the thing about that is that means that Class of Newcomb High would be part of that as well because uh, that happens in Tromaville. It's all the Marvel mm-hmm. universe. Yeah. It's got it's a, the Marvel, the multiverse. Yeah, there you go. The multi Marvel verse. <laughs> the fact <laughs> that, a cro- the, that a crossover hasn't happened yet is insane. Yeah. I, I bet you there's some fan made shit out there. Oh, I bet there is. Yeah. I mean, undoubtedly. If we look on DeviantArt long enough, probably. Or even Etsy, maybe. But, I mean, let's also talk about. We're these. just going to end up, like, looking up fan fiction anyway if we try. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would, that would we would be go a, in with a pure purpose and come out scarred. Oh, well, yeah. I mean. We're just going to get, yeah, Toxie Smut. <laughs> all the lemons, all the fucking lemon fix. Oh God! <laughs> oh, here's that one scene with a Camaro. Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about these characters and talk about this scene because this is one of the more infamous scenes in this movie. There's this dude Bozo, his uh, friend, I forget his name, and their girlfriend Slug, Slug and mm-hmm. their girlfriends, and they drive around at night. They play this game where they just straight up like run over and jack up pedestrians, and they give points. For all of these gotcha. pedestrians, Jack up is a uh, good term for what uh, they're uh, about to do to this kid. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, they they just run over a kid in this movie straight up. I mean, this is one of those movies that gives zero fucks, and it's because it's trauma. Yeah. And he doesn't die right away. He's crawling on the ground, mm-hmm. and then he backs up into him and smashes his head, which was actually a watermelon, I think. Right? It's <laughs> very obviously a watermelon. If you freeze frame yeah, it, you can see the rinds and everything. It, it has a wig on it. The, the the effects are amazing because like they're so corny it makes such a heinous scene like watchable yeah like, you you can watch back and still just feel fine like watching this kid get run over yeah seriously <laughs> and, and also it's either the, that or i'm a complete sociopath <laughs> no it's I, I i see what you mean there i mean 
in many ways, it kind of, with the music choice that they use, it just kind of adds to it. It's just the real jamming 80s soundtrack yeah. while they're straight up running over a kid on a bicycle. I mean, and, and that's another thing that makes this movie so entertaining is the choice of music. Like that body talk song at the beginning when, when everybody's just in the... listen to your body talk. talk. Yeah, the fucking body talk song. I mean, that, that's just so perfect. It kind of sets up the tone of the movie. And, I mean, this is just a nice little slice of sleaze here. Yeah. yeah they're, they're I, just I, I absolutely love the guys in the car as villains. I mean, it's such an original concept for a villain. Yeah. Uh, it's for, for a set of villains, even. Yeah, for, I mean, for the whole set of villains. Like all, all four of them are pretty much just one, like, main antagonist here. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it's kind of like you have the these antagonists and then you have the mayor who is actually, like, at the top of the criminal food chain in right. Tromaville. And he ends up being the main villain in the end, the one that Toxie ultimately dispatches at the very last uh, frame of the movie. Hell, yeah. The frames of the movie. And, uh, yeah, these characters are fucking psycho. And, and what gets to me, kind of, is just the way that... And, and what makes me laugh, ultimately, is the way that they treat Melvin in the beginning. I, mean, I know he, the dude's fucking like getting burned by nuclear waste and they're laughing at him. I know like the entire fucking health center is just chasing this poor kid down, reveling in his humiliation to the point that he just jumps out of a fucking window. He defenestrates. Defenestrates. Whoa. Yeah. He, he <laughs> defenestrates <laughs> right out the fucking window into a bunch of toxic sludge. And so. even after he falls in the sludge and is on fire, people are still around him pointing and laughing and making I know, <laughs> I know that, that that scene when he's on fire I'm like, Melvin's on fire and there's like literally a crowd of people on the sidewalk watching this yeah. what the fuck you, you can tell that that's just the neighborhood that came out to just watch this movie being made ultimately that, that's what that is that's all the locals there of wherever they film I think they filmed this in Jersey maybe Jersey yeah. baby mm -hmm. yeah makes sense right <laughs> Jersey Jersey Robert, what do you know about Joyzy? Tanning, t-shirt, laundry. Oh, no. <laughs> nice. Wow, nice. yeah, yeah, you pretty much ha nailed it on the head. Yeah. 100%. Get some stick snook. Not forgot too, Jim. Not too orange, right? You forgot like, Jim. Looks like a thousand bucks, right? Jim? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Jim. Jim tanning yeah. laundry. Jim tanning? Yeah. Tanning? Exactly. Oh, you did say Jim. Yeah. <laughs> I think I said tanning t-shirt, Jim tanning. <laughs> okay, maybe you did. I don't know. Yeah, and, and that's another thing is this whole You get setting. that Jersey facts right. You understand? <laughs> oh. oh. Jersey. <laughs> that, that's another thing is this whole setting of the Tromaville Health Center. This is like pretty much the focal point for a lot of this movie, actually. I mean, it, it's where we meet Melvin. We meet the uh, four psychopaths. And then we all, that's where, you know, the event that turns him into the Toxic Avenger occurs. And, you know, and he goes back a few times to take care of the two girls that fucked with him here. I mean, yeah, this is the catalyst for the entire film plot. Yeah. And, I mean, what do you, what do you think it says about 80s culture that this is set in a gym? Hmm, that's a, that's <laughs> an interesting... Yeah. Jazzercise. Mark, Jazzercise. I mean, crew was I mean, happening. I'm yeah. not so sure that the entirety of the 80s wasn't just all occurring in a gym. I mean, it's an excuse to have a lot of those 80s awful spandex going on. Oh, man. <laughs> the spandex in this. It it, it almost rivals the... Uh, pro wrestling. Pro wrestling, <laughs> for one. It, it, it almost rivals some of the uh, costuming and uh, designs in Sleepaway Camp, kind of. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit, right, Robert? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean that it, it's kind of strange. That, I mean, I'm sure that it's probably because that's the YMCA, and it was pretty much kind of free to film there for the most part. I'm sure that it was a yeah. cost-cutting thing. Oh, yeah. absolutely, but uh, make it work. Yeah, and and it adds to the the movie a lot. It's almost like its own character in a way, because I mean, hell, he even kills a drug pusher at that gym. Yeah, it's, you know? it's just as much a part of the movie as some analogy I can't think of at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's out there. It'll come to me. I'll tell you after we're done. Oh, but especially <laughs> th this blonde girl, I think her name is Julie, right? Julie, right? yeah. She's Julie. Oh, man, she is a piece of work, man. <laughs> I mean, 
just the way that she gets off on the kid getting run over, and they, and they fucking take pictures, man. Oh, that's yeah. what you meant by piece of work. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, she's a piece of work in other ways. Yeah, definitely. She's a piece of work and a piece of shit. Polaroids. Uh-huh. All day. Yeah, Polaroids. Yeah, just straight up taking Polaroids of dead kids and everything. Hey, I mean, that that she's got her kicks. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, know, you want to call those kicks? Serial killer trophies. Hey, that's, like, like you know, Dexter. that's... Jesus Christ. I think that's what makes <laughs> Toxie such a sympathetic character is just how evil like, everyone in this movie is just a terrible person except him. And his girlfriend. And his girl. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But like the whole town's like uh, the people that the truck drivers that showed up with the toxic waste. I mean, even them are garbage. Like there's just average yeah. Joe's having a job. They're doing a. Bunch of blow in the truck with the toxic waste wide open. Yeah, just, I just, love how that scene is set up. I was going to mention that earlier yeah. because, you know, while we've got Toxie running away from the entire town, these two truck drivers are just pulling in with nuclear waste. Mm-hmm. Are we talking about truck drivers or truck drivers? Truck drivers. Hey, drug drivers. Hey, drug, you know drug, what? They drug truckers? Are, are they drug truckers? Say, you know what? Truck Don't- driver. T- Five times fast. Truck driver, truck driver, truck driver, truck driver, truck driver. I'll, I'll do some more. Truck driver, truck driver, truck driver. Oh, God, oh. You know God what? damn it. Bring the fun out of it. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Jesus Christ. You know what? Don't care. Oh. Saw titties. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that's ultimately. And, I mean, <laughs> were we having the debate about tan lines earlier? Like, I mean, that seemed to be something that was pretty prevalent in the 80s. Yeah. Oh. It's like, yeah. I if mean. If you ever watch any retro porn, it, you really, see it. Really you do Emma, see it. Yeah. Really I mean. Anderson. Yeah, it's almost like a trope, <laughs> in a way, right? Like a what? It's almost like a trope in and of itself, because I even remember that in a, in like class of Newcomb High, mm-hmm. and even in a lot of other '80s movies where there was nudity. Man, remember remember '80s movies with nudity? Remember those? We're watching one. We're watching one right now. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? It's it's great. It's great, dude. There's something just so silly about '80s nudity. Yeah, like you can't t- really take it seriously. Yeah. No, not at all. Every slasher film from the 80s, pretty yeah. much, or in the 90s. Do you, you of y'all remember that 80s movie called One of the Guys? It had the girl who cross-dressed as a boy. No, but I've seen Joanna Man. Joanna Man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. That movie. That one, that one was great. That was good. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. The most Kino of Kinos. Uh, mm-hmm. Here it is. Here's, here's the aforementioned scene. This is Destiny, bro. He just dunks right into that toxic sludge. And these dudes are just covered <laughs> in blood. That was a Jeff Hardy swan dive. I know, right? That was a, yeah, that was a straight up swanton. These dudes pull over to snort coke with radioactive toxic waste just in their truck at just the right moment that Melvin dump, jumps out of the window. It, it's the perfect setup. And, and I love how the scenes preceding it set that up. And this is the kind of stuff that would happen with no FDA libertarians. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No regulation. Dear God. They don't that's because they don't care about that poor little guy. No, they don't. I mean, he's literally just melting in front of them and they're just like he's just playing. He he's joking. It's like, like fucking bozo, of course, being a bozo. Mm-hmm. I mean, let, let's not beat around the bush there. But, but yeah, it's just like even the background characters are just terrible. Yes. Like they're all like even the cops are showing up and they're not any help. <laughs> well, I don't know. What about all the people in the in the taco restaurant? Most of them seem kind of innocent. That is true. That is true. You know, like 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 for instance that baby who just has a shotgun shoved in his fucking face. No. Oh, they really did that. That, that baby was annoying. That baby was crying before yeah, those guys showed up. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 yeah. Shut the baby up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, guys. Oh, my sorry. God. <laughs> Robert, don't have a child. God damn it. Uh, I won't. Damn it all. Have a, have a child. You won't have a child? <laughs> there probably is a little Robert out there somewhere, right? No uh, children. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. We'll, we'll take your word for that. Yeah, take it. Yeah, but that that taco robbery scene, that's another crazy ass sequence. I mean, again, just like a comic book where you have the villains yeah. introduce themselves even though they show up for a total of like 5 minutes of the film. Yeah, and what memorable villains they are. There's uh there there's fucking Sean William Scott for one. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Stifler is the, there. The Road Warrior dude. One yeah. half the Road Warriors. Yeah, yeah, the, the Stifler Road Warrior dude with the shoddy. And he straight up blasts one dude who stands up to him and then straight shoots a dog. Yeah. Like just, just straight fucking shoots a dog. Poor just dog. blast. 
Of course, of course, in the scene where you see the dog dead and everything, he's still laying there breathing. It's always, it's obviously just being a good boy and just laying down, staying still for the camera. You <laughs> would certainly like to think so, Bo. Just, a, just a good boy. What would y'all, what would y'all rather happen in a restaurant? You witness like a heinous robbery like that, or someone coming in without a mask? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I think both of them are kind of scary. <laughs> both of them are very scary. Oh. oh well, that's that's why we carry, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wearing a mask. Bam! <laughs> Got a right to defend yourself. That's funny, exactly. Back then, when you came in with a mask, you were committing robbery. Right. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> exactly. All right. Exactly, bro. I don't know this world anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But what I love about that scene in the taco place is what I love about trauma movies in general. If you look in the background, there's always something happening. Yeah. You know, always. There, there's always movement. There's always life going on in the background. I, and there's all kinds of little details there, you know? Like, especially when you get into, like, terra firma or, you know, like... You know, Romeo and Juliet and stuff like that. Um, what was that other one? The Class of Newcomb High. Not, even. Night of the Chicken Dead, bro. Night of the Chicken mm. Dead, yeah. yeah. Poultry Guys. Poultry Guys. Poultry Guys. Oh, We've got a commentary coming out on that. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And that is an outrageous movie. I love it so much. And it continues the tradition of Troma's commitment to just vile fucking shit. <laughs> and, hey, look. <laughs> Troma was ahead of its time. Toxic Avenger has transgender rep representation. How about that? Yeah, transgender tra representation. Is, is that what and an accurate it? one too? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's oh something. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. Here we are at that scene with Cigarface. Uh -huh. Oh my lord. Uh, and I will, uh, another cool character is uh, Toxie's mom. Yeah, Toxie's well, mom. Like she's such a sweetheart. I, I love when uh, you know he's becoming toxy and she's at the door and he hears uh crap what's his name what's his real name melvin melvin yeah yeah, yeah. melvin it's totally slipped my mind i wonder why <laughs> uh, <laughs> um well like here's melvin's voice change as he's becoming toxy and she's all excited because her little boy just hit puberty <laughs> <laughs> my poor little melvin he's finally hit puberty it's like oh his balls dropped <laughs> that's, so that's it's so sweet it's one of the few sweet that's that's a sweet moment in this film that's yeah. a whole that's about as wholesome as you get from trauma <laughs> no the relationship with toxie and sarah that is wholesomeness wrapped up in fucking a wholesome blanket Let, let's break it out it's pretty it's pretty horrific still the relations like if you really look at it without knowing the context it's yeah. pretty terrible it's very sinful hey you know what <laughs> you know what i would say that melvin's balls probably really did drop in that scene because evidently he grew into a full muscular full muscular man grown man oh yeah with, with, yep. yeah of course with that changed voice that you were talking about michael that that is the best thing is that you have and the fucking... nothing was gonna stop him from fucking either. Oh yep. no, yeah. not at, not at all. <laughs> oh yeah, they, and, and they do have a scene of him having sex with his girlfriend. It's not as graphic as you would think it is, but it's still Toxy having sex with a fucking blind girl. So you that's know what, what I mean. It's like ah, well, this... I bet she knows a few tricks. <laughs> oh wow, Ash, really? Damn it! C can you imagine? I mean, you can't see. So your your other senses are are honed in like like Daredevil, yeah, <laughs> exactly. She probably gives a hell of a blowjob. Oh, yeah, I, I have a feeling we're gonna get canceled because of this. Why? No, it's I don't a compliment. Know. I don't it's not know cancelable. because it's not cancelable. No, I think that's I, you're you're uh, looking on the bright side of like a handicap, I guess. Also, I'm <laughs> autistic, so I that's not I, ableist at all. It, it's like having it's like having an inward pass. I like I'm autistic. So I can talk about disabled people. Okay. Because uh, I'm disabled. Well, in that case. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Okay. Yeah. We're all bipolar, dude. It's cool. It's yeah. cool. <laughs> it's cool, man. You're not alone. But I have another question about the taco restaurant. Okay, so there's sombreros on the fucking wall, right? But they have katana swords there. Why the fuck do they have katana swords there on to, the wall? To set up the uh, fight scene when the, the guy grabs scene. the katana. 
I mean, it, it's really that simple. I mean, it's so it inexplicable. Hey, yeah. they serve pizza there too, apparently. Yeah, so. yeah. There's a pizza oven in the fucking goddamn kitchen. Maybe I mean, it's I'm one of those restaurants that's like half Taco Bell, half Pizza Hut, or like half K. You know what? I, you know yeah, what I mean? I, oh yeah, like a Border Town. Oh no, no, yeah. where it's like, like literally like two those. like fast food yeah, places. Yeah, join. yeah, yeah. It, it's a triplet though, and like they also a, they also serve uh, Asian food, like a KFC Taco Hence Bell or something. Yeah, yeah. Dude. KFC Taco Bell. Remember those? Yeah, they, they, they also still have those. They also had the Border Town. Scopus. You know, they'd have the arcade in there as well. Like and you would have like KFC and Pizza Hut right, and Taco right. Bell mm-hmm. and you yeah. know what hell yeah and it's realistic that it got robbed because those are usually in like lower income areas too oh yeah that's that's just kind of a sad fact of life what yeah. are you gonna do life right? sad yeah right I'm always sad yeah <laughs> but We're yeah all the, depressed and anxious that's just life yeah but but yeah the the from the pizza oven to you know also apparently they have milkshakes there. It, it's such an inexplicable scene, but I just love it so much because Toxie just comes in and just whoops that ass. Oh, yeah. Like, 100%. Rips Homeboy's arm off, and, and it's, it's cool that he doesn't notice it at first, and then all of a sudden he's like, ah! You that's know? the Mortal Kombat scene I'm talking about. Yeah. That, that's why if, 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 if Toxie were a playable character in Mortal Kombat, he should, he should have that as his fatality. That would be a good fatality for him. Or the Friar, right, like you were saying, Michael. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My favorite. Meet little Melvin. He's a 90-pound weakling. Everyone hated Melvin. I'm gonna take this mop and shove it down your throat. They teased him. I wanna do it with you. Okay. They taunted him. They tormented him until he had a horrifying accident and fell into a vat of nuclear waste. Transforming little Melvin into a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. Melvin became the Toxic Avenger. The first superhero born out of nuclear waste. Holy shit! I don't know what it was, but it saved my life. All right, everybody, drop your tacos or I'll blow your brains out. The vandals and the perverts had their way with the little people of Tromaville until the Toxic Avenger ripped them apart. The Toxic Avenger. His face is so terrifying. We can't show it to you now. You'll have to see the movie for yourself. The Toxic Avenger can bend steel with his bare hands. Oh, for all the kid. Get it? Leap small cars in a single bound. He crushes drug pushers. Smashes hit and run drivers. For incredible explosive action, you must see the Toxic Avenger. He's a different kind of hero. The Toxic Avenger is coming to your town. Look out. Yeah, just a fire. That's not, just that's not Toxie's first show of strength, though. It's this scene right here where uh, yeah, he, he saves a cop. Yeah, he saves a cop and sa- takes on Cigar Face. That's cancelable right there. You can't you can't save a cock and uh, save a cop. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. No. A, I guess we can't. We'll yeah. Save a save a cop uh, from anything. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh wow. They're... You'll get canceled for doing that. I, I I love how this police commissioner is an obvious Nazi though. Like he even Heil's Hitler right there, man. Oh my god! I think there's I think there's a moment where he clicks heels and shit. Yeah, they. But you know, he's he's kind of a likable character. So that's just showing you they got layers. <laughs> you know, that's, he's, he's oh, like wow. he's in that scene in the taco. Show, he's enjoying a taco, investigating what was going on. Yeah, that's the other thing. When the <laughs> cops are there and investigating, they're just munching on tacos the entire time. Yeah, there, there's dead bodies everywhere, traumatized fucking fast food employees, and they're just munching down on tacos like it's nothing. If this movie does anything realistically. It's 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 its portrayal of the police. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, very, very much so. Incompetent. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. By the way, I wanted to say, I thought about this, okay? What if the restaurant is is basically just showing the evils of consumerism? It's it's like a whole representation of American consumerism at its finest. 
just oh, yeah. this restaurant that doesn't even serve authentic types of food for and just serves many different kinds piled up. Yeah, that that's a pretty striking metaphor, I would say, honestly. Just look at American food culture. I mean, it's it's fucked. Oh, it's it's an amalgamation of just a bunch of shit that doesn't make sense. Sometimes. Exactly. And all of it will kill you. All of it will. <laughs> oh, definitely. I mean, if, if you watch like diners, drive-ins, and, and dives, you'll fucking see that. It's like, oh yeah, there's just death everywhere. But it's so tasty. And you know what? Who wants to live that long anyway? <laughs> yeah, life sucks. Okay, <laughs> the fatalistic angle. Yeah. Okay. Might okay. as well go out with a bang. Mm. Right about that. Jesus Christ. Go and vegan. Go vegan, stomach. everybody. I want to make sure they can't lift my coffin. <laughs> <laughs> go, go vegan, ladies and gentlemen. Go vegan. <laughs> yeah, shut all y'all up real quick. I No, I had a veggie so, burger earlier. Hey, that's good. It was delicious. It is. They are. I, I you know, I enjoy both. I gotcha. I'm just a hedonist, dude. Whatever makes me happy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I guess that's fair enough. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's basically the perspective of the villains in this movie. Yeah, pretty much. All of them, actually. Like, every single one of them. Like, the entire town, pretty much. <laughs> but, oh, oh, yeah, here we are. We're setting up this sauna scene. Yeah, there's a scene where Toxie takes care of the other girlfriend, the, the brown hair girl, and she gets completely seated on some hot coals. Hot hot, hot rocks in a sauna, actually. Yeah. See, yeah, Toxie is... I, you could probably consider him an anti-hero. A little bit of an anti-hero. Because of the really brutal way he takes people out. <laughs> yeah, definitely an anti-hero. Because, I mean, anti-hero by definition is literally just a hero with undesirable or untraditional qualities oh yeah and he's a he's a complete outcast at this point in the film yeah but that's what i really like about his character arc though throughout this movie he does go to certain lows but eventually like the military comes to try to kill him and everything and eventually you know toxie is exonerated they don't shoot at him because they they're just like no he's unarmed and everybody's just trying to stop them from shooting him and eventually they embrace him. At the very end of the movie, Tromaville embraces Toxie as their hero. Yeah, they do, actually. That, that's, I guess, also another wholesome part of the story. Maybe even more wholesome than the, the two aforementioned scenes. No. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 maybe. The no. purity scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the wholesome. best. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. Ooh. Ooh, what happened? What did you do, Ash? Uh oh. Uh oh, just ignore you. Why should I ignore you? Oh, okay. I thought we were having issues. No, we're not having issues. I was about to storm off. Can't stand unprofessionalism. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Why the fuck did you get on collateral cinema? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. What the fuck? Hey, I'm having a good time. Hey, yeah, I think we all are. I mean, we're we're not even going on a script this time. We've been doing our shows kind of without an itinerary just to kind of see how it feels. And so far, I like how it's a little looser. Honestly. Yeah, honestly, I, I stopped using itineraries on Collateral Gaming as well. Really? Yeah. Because, damn, I, yeah, I, still, I, I still write them. <laughs> well, I mean, in many ways, what you write... Like, I've been doing of, this for I've nothing. I've been writing this shit for nothing. <laughs> I mean, in many ways, what you write is more like just kind of a, like a bullet point type thing, which yeah. is still... Honestly, we should still at least do that from it's time to time. But. Google, Wikipedia, and IMDb mostly. Yeah, I mean, we could at least have IMDb opened up or something like that. Hey, I have you Wikipedia read my opened mind. up. <laughs> <laughs> All three key points. All three key points. But what do you all think about the graphic violence in this movie? Is it really that heinous here? I really don't feel like it's nearly as graphic as it's really known to be. It, it's so over the top, and the there's no digital effects. It's all blood splatters and you know prosthetics and things like. And it's so obvious that it's not off putting. Yeah, it, it's it's more fun. I I could see a lot of people being put off by it, but I mean, if you like these kind of movies, or and, you know, you're a cinephile, you're not gonna shy away from anything in this film. Oh no, not 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 at all. And, and the cheesy comic book is is it's not a dark, dreary film. 
No, not at all. It, it, in many ways, it's kind of joyous. Yes. It's, it's a very joyful film, kind of. Even when it's being really sick and sadistic, it's joyfully so. And that's what makes trauma movies in general so infectious to yep. me. You know, no matter how politically incorrect it gets, it's just, it never really comes to that line of just, you know, outright offense. It's just like, it's trauma. It's like, what yeah. are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Like, what are you going to actually say? It, they, they've been doing that shit for so fucking long. Well, and everything's done to comedic effect. I, that's why I think that the graphic depictions of violence aren't heinous, as you would say. They are just, like you guys said, over the top. It's it's the same way I feel about like the, the gore and Mortal Kombat, but even more comic. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good comparison. It's like you sit there and play Mortal Kombat all day and do all the <laughs> horribly disgusting the big... Because of the context, it's it's not unnerving or anything, and it's the same thing here. No, it's kind of goofy, even you know, mm-hmm. and and then this even more so. Like we're we're in that scene where those uh, these three new bad guys are robbing the uh, taco restaurant we've yeah, been yeah. talking about. Yeah, the taco place. And it's the intense scene. You know, they come in, the guy points a shotgun at a little baby and threatens them, and because of the violence we've seen already it's like you kind of like anything can happen right here it just becomes absolutely absurd i mean we we just saw a guy get blasted we're about to see a a dog get blasted as well not just a dog a support dog yeah this line woman who will become toxie's girlfriend's support animal that helps her walk (laughs) yeah i mean that that, that's a especially type of fucked up but it's still just hilarious man and then it's oh man, it seeks into that the the rape reference. It's oh no, uh. oh I don't know. It's like oh that's so unfortunate. But still, the other thing about this scene is just how well paced it is, right? Right. Mm. I mean, the pacing is just really just going on and on and on. I mean, it doesn't miss a beat at all. In fact, this entire movie it just really kind of blows right by. And it, it, it's how long? Is it like at least a good 90 minutes at least? I, I mean, so. huh. yeah. And it actually goes by like in nothing, really. Yeah, it really it really does. I mean, it's paced like like a superhero movie, honestly. You know, like like an origin story superhero movie. Like go compare this to say the first Raimi Spider-Man film, and, and I think the pacing is is just right there. Exactly. About the same. In fact, the whole, like, the town talking about Toxie and, and him becoming a hero, you know, superhero scene, superhero, like, montage, is it, just like the one in the Raimi film. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, unfortunately, he doesn't have his Aunt May, you know? I mean, he has his mom, but his mom initially is freaked out by him. but Casts him out, yeah. yeah but, but, but in the end, she stands up for him. Right, exactly. Can we talk again about it? how highly trained these robbers are, though, in this taco robbery scene. They really <laughs> they really are. They're like martial arts masters. <laughs> I mean, look at this shit. It looks like they've been training, like, since they were teens or some shit. Or, military training. Or they or have something. military there, training, right? There is some formal oh, training there. Yeah, yeah. For, for a while there, they're really giving Toxie a run for his money. I see a lot of Van Damme skills and... Yeah, yeah, right? Mixed with Steven Seagal. But he straight up rips one of their arms off, so I don't even know why the other two even try, Ooh. to be honest. Yeah. I mean, this dude just straight up ripped a dude's arm off. You really going to try to fight him? No. <laughs> well, I don't know. Easily. I don't know. Here's the other thing. This this dude with the nunchucks, he's initially kind of uh, presented as very, very dumb. But look at him go. He's d- pulling some Bruce Lee shit with nunchucks. And, and then he grabs the, one of the samurai swords and he's like using that ex- expertly. It's <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Where did these common thugs learn to do this shit? And why is Sean William Scott with them? Why is Stifler there? <laughs> God damn it. Fucking Stifler. Stiflers. It's, like, it's like Stifler joined one of the, like, the baseball theories or something. <laughs> I mean, shit. You guys want some ice cream? Oh God, no, no, that that scene. No, that 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 is vegan hell right there. <laughs> just, just having somebody hold you down and just forcibly shove a bunch of milk down your throat. Oh God. Dairy milk too. Oh, oh no, please. No. Yeah, see that that's the worst part for Bob about this scene is is the milk being 
shoved down someone's yeah. throat. Not a guy's hands being uh, forced into an air fryer. Hey. A guy being shoved into a pizza oven. It's hey. the milk going down this guy's hey. throat. Hey, dairy is rape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it. Meat is murder. Dairy is rape. It is, it, you can't look away from all the all these crazy killings and stuff because of what these guys were doing just a few minutes before. It's just like everyone is so terrible that anything toxic does just like justified. And and there's the whole thing where it's actually just part of his nature. Mm-hmm. He he actually mutated to want to destroy evil. Mm-hmm. He's he's compelled to do that. And that's actually kind of tested later on in the movie whenever he goes into the laundromat and kills that little lady. Like in, initially people are just like, "Well, wait a second. It does, isn't he only supposed to kill evil people?" And then this lady was, looked like she was innocent, but then it turns out, no, she was running like a slave ring or some shit like yeah. that. Yeah. And, and it's like, holy fuck. You just got to keep your faith in Toxie that he's doing right. Yeah, exactly. I, and, and of course, you know, that's used as a pretext to kill him from the mayor who's running all the criminal enterprises. And, and that's what precipitates the whole standoff at the end of the movie where the goddamn military is there. Like... I, w- I would actually like to know how the fuck Kaufman and Hertz managed to get all those tanks and everything and look like they had like armored vehicles and whatnot. It's like, how the fuck did they get all of that? You just ask nicely. Oh, okay. Just, you just go to anyone in the military and ask. <laughs> Robert, you hear that? Next time we do a movie, we need military shit. Let's just ask. Yeah, literally, it, just go to anyone wearing camo. <laughs> oh my god they have to say yes it's gov- it's government property so it's our property exactly hey, there you go taxes yeah. right taxes yeah right but anyway i think that we're going to go ahead and start getting into our final thoughts here let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and start with michael man what are your final thoughts here i just i just love this style of film i, lo- I love this one it's just a fun gory dumb trope and it's just wanted to sit back and have all of them, all the trauma films and that style of uh, there's a couple of were not done by trauma. I mean, Hobo with the shotgun, same style to it and everything. And I then, uh, love that movie. And Planet Terror. Yeah, Planet, Planet Terror does, very, does have that trauma vibe. Got it. Got that feel to it. And uh, Machete, too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, Machete could totally be a trauma movie. Yeah. Fun, hilarious, disgusting, and it, yeah, they're great. Hell yeah. Robert, your turn. What are your thoughts on the Toxic Avenger and on Troma, man? Like, what, like I, I know that you were saying that that's like kind of part of your childhood a little bit, right? Yeah. You know, I think I watched Nukem High before I saw the Toxic Avenger, and, um, you know, it was, it was interesting. Like, for the first time, it's like, okay, this whole other universe that, you know, is like brand new to me and i didn't i didn't watch all of the class of nukem highs or okay i saw toxic avenger on like netflix when they gave them all out all at once yeah and then i just watched them back to back and it was a it was actually cool binging all that yeah it know. is really binge worthy stuff i mean you can pretty much sit in an afternoon and just watch the first four toxic avenger movies and have a blast doing it mm. like absolutely they just get more hilarious, you know, as as you watch them. You know? Yeah, and, yeah, and you know they get more outrageous. Like, I mean, Citizen Toxie. Oh my god, that, that's <laughs> actually my favorite of the sequels. Honestly, it's it, it's hilarious. And in, in the ending with Kabuki Man, it's just <laughs> god damn it, Kabuki. And I keep wanting to throw like Riccio in in the picture. You, you know, y- you know what they need uh, to do? They need to do like Toxic Avenger v K- Sergeant Kabuki Man. Oh no! <laughs> no, v- fuck it. Yeah, exactly. Toxie versus Kabuki Man. Yeah, there you go. Oh my lord! Why hasn't Why hasn't Kaufman and Hertz done that yet? What the fuck? Huh. God damn it! The dawn would, of trauma. That would sell like a monster movie. It would. Right? All right, Ash. What are your final thoughts on Toxic Avenger? Oh man. Well, I'm just getting introduced to the trauma franchise per se. I mean, just basically what comes along when we're doing the podcast and in our personal lives when we decide to to watch movies together but i think so far toxic avenger is the most endearing and uh i I think my favorite out of the bunch that we've seen definitely yeah so far 
So far. So far. But, you know, I'd love to get into the sequels and see where Toxie goes. Oh, you'll have all kinds of fun with the sequels, man. And we need to show you the Nukem High movies because those are all-time classics. They're all very watchable. They're all a lot of fun. I, I have a lot of love for the Nukem High series. Like, I've watched them with uh, Robert many times, and yeah, that's, a, that's another good place to start if you're getting into trauma. But as far as my thoughts, I mean, this is just the ultimate superhero, eco-warrior, slasher, horror, action, comedy movie. <laughs> it's, it's everything that you would want it to be. You know, the, the gore is hilarious. The characters are over the top. Toxie is likable both as Melvin and in his Toxic Avenger form. I mean, especially in his Toxic Avenger form. I, 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 I love how the voice changes. I love the growling all the time. And, yeah. the, and the script is just so well-paced and so well-written that, you know, like, like we said earlier, you can get through this movie very quickly and just have a blast and just not even think twice about it. So, I mean, Toxic Avenger is also important to me because trauma is important to me. I, I, I feel like we need trauma to exist. We, we, we need them. We need somebody like that. And, I mean, making movies just without any rules, with, without, you know, any thought. Well, a, a little bit of thought. Without any fucks. Bit. Without any fucks to give, exactly. This is filmmaking with zero fucks to give. And it has given us just some classic characters, classic stories, and movies that are just outrageous. Like, for instance, in Terror Firmer, you know, the whole, oh, I didn't even want to say it, the rape, the rapist part. Rape the rapist. God. You turn it around on the rapist. Oh, my God. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that, yeah, trigger warning here, everybody, I guess. I mean, but yeah, trauma is very necessary. It's necessary filmmaking, and I'm glad that they're still around. It's like, Lloyd Kaufman, please stick around to make more movies. We, we need you, bro. Sponsor our podcast. Yeah, yeah, maybe we could. I mean, y you know that, you know, the cinema snob, his, all his movies are on trauma now. So you can get that through, through them. And Toxic Avenger, I mean, you can pretty much find this movie anywhere mm. nowadays. I mean, I think you can even still find it on YouTube on their actual channel. But, but buy it. Yeah, or buy, buy definitely buy, buy it. Buy this movie. Buy this so, movie. This okay. movie. 30th anniversary copy like you did, right? Yeah, and, and that's the other thing. It's the Toxic Avengers 37th anniversary. It's getting close to 40 years of Toxie. Uh, so, so this is, like, just perfect timing. Yeah, you're right. Dude, we got to see all these on, like, Blu-ray or something. Yeah, yeah, uh, in high dev. It's going to look sharp. Uh, Hell yeah. Oh, that's going to be so great. And the effects are going to be just so much funnier after that. Oh, th definitely. They will be. They definitely They're going to have to really touch up the uh, kid getting run over to, yeah. make it, to make it like at least a little believable. Maybe take away the uh, the watermelon rinds a yeah. little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there are rumors of a Toxic Avenger reboot, right? There are some rumors of it. I'm not sure how set in concrete that is, but... I don't know. A modern Toxie could be interesting if it's done right. And yes, uh, Toxie should totally be in the MCU, 100%. Toxie for MCU, hashtag, hashtag. Who would play Toxie? Oh, man, that's a good question. Who would play Melvin? Oh. oh. Gummo and then Jim Carrey would play Toxie. <laughs> <laughs> Gummo, he's fucking stupid. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think maybe Michael Sarah could play Melvin and then get. I could see it. And then yeah, get, I, I, can Michael Sarah be that like eccentric with it though? Maybe. Like, I mean, I don't know. He's been so typecast that maybe he needs to play against type. You, you would need almost like a cooler actor to dumb himself down and do that exaggeration of what a nerd is. Tom but, Holland. Tom yeah, Tom, Tom Holland. Holland? Could do it. Yeah, there you go. And then, and then for for Toxie, get Batista. Definitely, hell yeah, Batista, Definitely. man. Batista would be perfect. And since he already has that connection with James Gunn, he could get in the in the front door with Toxie. I mean, come on now. And Batista's voice would be perfect. It would be, yeah. yeah. And we're getting into the multiverse of the MCU, so. They can definitely recast Batista. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> no, ha have have him has both the uh, 
Drax and as Toxie. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah both and both I, of them. Yeah, it's actually the perfect timing because we're getting into multiverse shit. So yeah, definitely. Bring Toxic Avenger. Bring Toxie into the MCU. Make it a thing. Hashtag Toxie for MCU. We're totally going to make that a thing. At least 100%. in a Deadpool movie or something. Yeah. That would be a great cameo in a Deadpool movie. It'd be so perfect. And get James Gunn to make a Deadpool movie. Isn't that why you see Stan Lee at all the, like, some of the openings? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. It Deadpool. says that the comic, comic book series was published by Marvel to like ninety one and ninety two or something. Yeah, yeah, so. oh, wow. yeah. Stan Lee has he had a lot of involvement with trauma. Like, I mean, yeah, he he actually did some uh, intro uh, intros for like what one of some of the Newcom High movies, right? Yeah, he does cameos, but he's like, dude, I'm not a real actor. Like, you know. yeah, definitely check out Toxic Avenger, everybody, and we're definitely going to get into more trauma in the future because it's it's just a treasure trove of great stuff. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping everything up. First off, I want to thank Michael Cornwell for coming on to the show. Dude, it, had a blast. It really was. It was a blast talking about this movie. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Toxic Avenger and trauma and all of that. Is and there anything to expect from you, Cornwell? Or are we? is there going to be a return to podcasting? Or Don't expect anything from me. <laughs> <laughs> r right on, man. That's <laughs> fair enough. But, Ash, what's going on with Collateral Gaming? Well, uh, actually, just today, as of the time of this recording, we got out our 420 special. A little bit late, coming at the end of 420 month, but whatever. And we are going to be talking about Dead Space next. Excellent. After, that's, of that's course... That's a creepy, a creepy movie. That's a creepy game. Well, actually, after our Mortal Kombat 11 review, which is continuing the multi-part celebration collaboration we're doing with Collateral Cinema for the new movie. Yeah. And we just got out a bonus round focused on Mortal Kombat as well. We did the 2021 movie review. That was our last episode on Collateral Cinema as well. Exactly. And then we did the bonus round with the first four arcade games. Right. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun reminiscing about that, honestly. I had a blast going back to Mortal Kombat, a game that I feel really kind of you know, set the foundation for gaming culture as we know it. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was a hell of a lot of fun talking about it. So yeah. stay tuned for that. Uh, and we are probably going to get back on our YouTube and Patreon content. So stay tuned. Yes. Uh, likewise for Collateral Cinema. And since we're getting close to the end of the season, I guess we can start talking about Robert Low Budget Late Night, right? We're still going to make that a thing, are we? Uh... And, well, maybe we should keep that under wraps for now. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Robert. Shh. Okay, okay. All right. Robert, have we? do we have anything to expect no. from your short film? No, at all. No. no. Nothing. No. no. Nothing? No, at all. Nothing's really? in, nothing's in, in production right now. No. Keep him guessing. Pre-production. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Don't look, encourage him. Nothing that we, we might be filming or, or may not be filming in a uh, cabin maybe. in the woods. Uh, Kevin 28 in the woods. <laughs> Kevin 28 in the woods. Oh, oh wow. Maybe, maybe in about two weeks. 28 know. cabins in a wood. In, in a wood. <laughs> in a single wood. Cabin made out of 28 pieces of wood. Okay, there, there we go. go. There we go. Yeah, there, there we go. We have a movie now. Well, for Collateral <laughs> Cinema, our next venture is going to be a Nicholas Winding Refn movie, right, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> Drive. Drive, exactly. We're doing drive. Goslin. Fucking Gosling, man, doing the driver. And that's another collateral cinema tradition. We've got to get Robert in with his car movie. Yep. In fact, there's going to be a couple of car movies. I think we're going to do one right after that. We're going to be doing Hooper, right? We got another one. We got Hooper. Yeah. Burt Reynolds. Burt fucking Reynolds. May he rest in peace. Y'all should do cars. Yeah, we should do cars, <laughs> totally. Cars. Robert, yeah. we should totally do cars. Car movie. We gotta do cars. <laughs> that is a fun movie, exactly. <laughs> cars. I, I'm totally down for that. That Lindsay would be Lohan's, more fun. Uh, Herbie Loaded. Uh. Yeah, Herbie Reloaded, exactly. Talk about the Herbie movies. <laughs> Did, uh, is that the uh, Lindsay Lohan one, right? Yeah, with Michael Fully Keaton. Fully Loaded, right? Was yeah. that Michael Keaton? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, we're going to get back to Director's Cut here pretty soon. I think we're going to do another commentary. I'm debating what movie we should do. I want to do, like, a short anime. I want to do Ninja Scrolls. What do you think, Robert? Should we do Ninja Scroll? I'd be down. Man, oh. these trauma films are so trashy. We managed to mention Lindsay Lohan. Oh, <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. 
I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's a sign to fucking end it. Maybe <laughs> that that's a bad omen, one way or the other. So Ninja Scroll. Ninja Scroll. What do you think, Robert? I think that that could be a lot of fun. I don't remember watching that. Well, we'll watch it once, and then we'll watch it again and do the commentary. Watch it, review it. Yeah, something like that. But anyway. Oh, that is a lot of eggs. Ooh, (laughs) all the eggs. Yeah, this is one of those montages. But anyway, I guess we'll go ahead and end it here. I'm Bo Maddox. I'm Robert Ortegon. Ashley Chancellor. Michael Cornwell. And this was Collateral Cinema. And... Let's go to Tromaville, guys. Fuck it. Let's do it. I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> Get on a Troma bus to Tromaville. Get on a bus to Tromaville. Later, Hell everybody. Yeah. Not a place I would visit. Is it a special bus? <laughs> to where we're all cool. <laughs> Bye. Cinema is an L Company production. All music and movie clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.